I made my choice long ago. I would never accept any man's remark about my life because he doesn't know what Jesus told me. Meanwhile, I was not poor. I, I was a research officer in the oil industry. My last salary was 1.2 million a month. My housing allowance was 15 million every year. I was not a poor man. I was not poor. I lived four steps below my wealth. You need to see where I stayed in Lagos. You need to see where I stayed. You know my you don't know my house. Where I stayed in Wadata. You, you, okay, you know Wadata. Uh, that was where I stayed as a frontline oil worker at the depot. If rain falls, it, it, it flows in through my, through my sitting room outside. You know why I stayed there? It's because we needed money to push ministry. And I was the only one working. So I don't need an encounter from God to suggest to me that God was, God had already settled those bills by giving me that job. I married the daughter of a professor, brought her into that place where water flows. And then you will look at me in that state and say, oh my God. There was a reproach that I will not carry except I was following Jesus. That became my lot and portion. And the woman I took from a professor's house, who was an only child for 15 years, was happy to stay with me in that condition. She knew I was earning money, but it won't translate to anything in our wardrobe. It won't translate to anything in our kitchen. Because we were living with people the, way, the same way you are. But you have copied my example. That part is the part that God uses to raise leaders. Oh, you can't slave for people. You can't take a hit because of people. It means you are small. You are a small man in a big body. Just like, like Adam. Adam was like two months old, but he was a full-grown man. You will look at his size and think there's, there's, there's something happening. He was a small man in a big body. He was no match for Satan. Yes. And on my job, I was very good. I was exceptionally good. Don't think. When I gave in my resignation, they rejected it the first time. I had to go and pray for three months before I gave it again. And, and the team passed. I was, it was two weeks for me to write the exam that would make me a manager. Two weeks. I would have had an office that's as big as this room. That's when the great monarch said, resign, resign now. Resign. If you, if you see the progression, you will say, this is the spirit of reproach. You wow. escaped something from the village. The thing that has been haunting you, has been haunting you, has been, you are finally. Wow. <laughs> 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 he forsook Egypt. He damned the wrath of the king. And he endured all of these possibilities was because there was a consciousness alive inside of his soul. He became captive to what he saw. So when I turned in my resignation, I was in the place of prayer when God says, okay, now, you are ready to begin to, to wield the scepter you were ordained to wield. The fact that you have a call doesn't mean you will fulfill it. No. If you, if you like, <laughs> accept the pathway of the flesh, you will fulfill Satan's prophecy for your life. Oh, Satan will, will pretend as if he has your interest in mind until he throws you into perpetual confusion. I've seen that in the lives of many people. It's only God. Allah, trust him in that valley. Trust him there. 
Trust him. Don't change the rhythm of the movement. If not, you will be exposed. He endured. For he saw him who is invincible. saw him he became captive just like apostle paul he said i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision he was a captive of a certain vision of the heavens that he saw all through his life this is the second spiritual sense his sight this is the instrument through which god brings men into spiritual captivity before god will give you revelation huh? you want revelation in the world he will make you captive by visions first There is no one who is not an ex-convict of Jesus that carries revelation. Yes. He must be a convict bound by the revelations that he has put before your face. He endured because he saw him who is I came to Abuja and I went to Zenith Bank to do a transaction. Then I now saw my colleagues that did not uh, resign. I saw one of them that did not resign. <laughs> then I knew that God had mercy on me. <laughs> what you are calling promotion eh, is death. <laughs> follow God, follow <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, by the message of God, I no longer join lines in banks. No, the moment I'm coming, there's a place we, we normally stay. <coughs> I don't join lines again. We stay there. It's, it's managers that bring us what we are looking for. I came and saw my colleague. He was trying, he was trying to bring all that to a line. May you endure. May you endure. <laughs> May you endure. There was no place we went that people didn't know us. From the airport, police people will start serving us. From the airport. There are some airports we we'll go to. We don't even see the immigration officers that stamp our passports. No, we are somewhere. You came here. That's all. I'm, I'm talking about Europe, Africa, everywhere. You will never become that because you desire to be great. You will become that because you are foolish enough to follow the consciousness that was kindled. It is greatness that kindles that vision. It is greatness that allows that reproach to come upon you. It's greatness. That reproach, if you have the eyes, you will know that, oh, that's greatness. Walking out is mystery in the life of this vessel. And when you deny the foolishness of greatness, you will party. with excellencies that are not eternal. You are part of a reign that will not last forever. And your fears will fall upon you in the days to come. Sight is God's means of bringing men into captivity. Wise men allow themselves to be captive for the things they see. Who for the hope that was set before him, the Bible speaking about Jesus, he endured the cross. There was something he saw that gave him the capacity to survive the cross, despising the shame. Oh, who told you that there is no shame 
as a, one of the condiments of the actualization of destiny. There is shame in it. But it is greatness weaving out his mystery. Nobody will want to identify with you in that crucible of shame. No, no, no. This is not greatness. So anybody that follows you then has seen what is making you obedient. Those are the people God is giving you for destiny. You can bless people who are say, you are blessed. But the people that will work with you to the end are people that have also, are also partakers of the things that you have seen. Those are the ones that understand the meaning 